Amy is one of the better matchups for this sort of uh, map because it's not like ZVT where cross and horizontal and vertical kind of completely break it in favor of a certain race. But <clears throat> it does still change up the ways in which you expand and how you take an expansion, what sort of pushes are very possible. Here on the horizontal pushes, let's see what's going to happen. We have to the bottom left hand side, the purple Zerg player from Team Revolution. It's the one and only Mr. Mechanics himself, it's sort of. Let me just drag this to the side a little bit there. There we go. Perfect. And to the bottom right hand side, we have our yellow Protoss player from Invictus Gaming. Let's hear it, guys, if you're cheering on Maxed. Our Chinese Protoss player. We just saw some Chinese. Uh, sorry, I can't speak anymore. We just saw some Chinese dominance in the uh, in the OSE All Stars, of course. It was a very um, very fun, um, very fun um, event. But the Chinese players making it to the finals knocked out players such as Jim Rising, Major Cham, and so on, on their way. A lot of the Latin American players that play in this event actually. I guess because the time zone is not ridiculously bad for them. Um, I guess the problem for NA players is that it just starts so early, right? Because 11 a.m. for me is like, well, 6 a.m. earliest for America. So I guess they could have, you know, if you're Pacific, you could have very late night kind of playing. But uh, it's still a pretty tough time zone to play in. Gonna be seeing this uh, probe, just gonna scatter around here early. Unfortunately, you won't find Sword of until the last location he checks in. Sort of has already got one overlord heading to the top left. We won't find his opponent there, but the second overlord to the bottom right hand side will. And this is quite nice because it means that he's going to be able to see this overlord. You know, this overlord can sit to the side and he's going to be able to come in and he's already being, you know, he's going to be ready in position to scout in towards the main base of his opponent at a little bit of a later stage to try and figure out, well, what build order is my opponent doing? What buildings is he going for? Can I figure out, you know, what sort of information can I pick up on here? As we're going to be seeing that overall continue across the map then. You see this probe out here from Max Ed has finally found his opponent. Doesn't check too much, just sees the natural. He's going to start looking around to try and figure out the timing of the third base perhaps. Maybe try and block this a little bit as time passes by. A few Zirglings on the way up though, sort of. Not going to cut any corners, going to go Lings and Queens and then the third hatchery. Just going to take his time with him. He might take this up a third hatchery as well. Um, is generally the kind of, you know, if your opponent isn't in the top left, then there's no real reason not to take this base. It is generally the better base to take, so. Third hatchery comes down here, and those couple of Zerglings by sort of are going to be continuing to, um, chase around, and they're going to be looking to catch that probe here over the next few moments, so. Probe going to be, um, backing away towards the center of the map, and there's an Adept popping out from Maxed. That's going to start moving forwards right now, and you're going to be looking to see what he can do. Picks off a Zergling, and there it goes, shading on forwards now as well. Twilight Council going to be on the way up too, and we're just going to be seeing this finishing up, and yeah, just continue to set up into this. We're going to be seeing this um, Adept from Maxed, and again, just going to back away slightly, and Resonate Glaives has indeed started. So Resonate Glaives starting on up, and there's that Adept just continuing to move on over to the right-hand side of the map, so Adept is going to be pulling back home, has poked away at and found the third base, and that's all the information he needs right now. We'll see two gateways as a follow-up from this Twilight Council and Resonate Glaives. Maxed playing a very standard game for the first few moments of this right now. It's kind of nice to see Maxed actually getting a group without a Terran player. His worst matchup is PVT, and yet every single time we see him in the Leifen Cup, for example, he has like three Terrans or two Terrans in his group. It's really crazy and unfortunate. As Maxed will just pause for a moment. Obviously, we are going to have some uh, lag issues, perhaps, through the day, uh, because Chinese players playing on NA, etc., etc. 11 a.m. for me is 3 a.m. West Coast. Yeah, I know. So, um, 3 a.m. West Coast is pretty, <laughs> you know, exactly. It could be a late night one, you know. It could be a late nighter for the West Coasters, but, um, yeah, sort of going to have a lot of ping as well. All right, so we're going to uh, resume. And kick this off once again. So, apparently both players playing with quite a lot of latency here, which is a little bit strange. We are on the central server, which should be best for both. Um, it's a little bit strange. I mean, I can imagine that sometimes the Chinese VPNs kind of uh, hiccup a bit, and we see some, like, spikes in latency. But, uh, sort of, I'm surprised to have so much latency here. I mean, central should be, like, about 150 MS, I guess, at most. Something along those lines. Anyways, for now, we're going to be seeing double Stargate coming from Maxed. This is something which really has 
made a return in the metagame as of late, the double Stargate to follow up the Resonating Glaives. It kind of fell out of uh, popularity a lot when we saw kind of players who sort of, you know, Hydra Bane basically became a thing, and Hydra Bane is a very hard counter to Phoenix Adept. So we saw that sort of happen, and now people have sort of figured out how to play against Hydra Bane. They're happy to go sort of at Phoenix Adept again, and then transition into their kind of counter Hydra Bane army. So it's pretty interesting, and PvZ I think is probably the most interesting matchup to have watched over the course of Legacy of the Void so far, because it has taken so many twists and turns, and we've seen so many kind of popular kind of build orders and things like this, and things which have become a very kind of big part of the metagame, and then have swapped back once again, so... It's been really, really fun to sort of see how things have changed over time. There's going to be seen a few Zergons just out the front here from Sword of, and a couple of Phoenix from Max Ed are just going to be kind of sitting around or popping out of this main base. So a couple of Phoenix popping out, they'll start to hunt the Overlord, which sort of has committed to see what's going on. He knows it's double Stargate, so he knows exactly what he's playing against, and we'll get to see here how he develops his strategy to play against this. The Lair is on the way, obviously that's a great way to start off, looking towards that Hydra stem most likely as the game continues. A few queens moving towards the center of the map, it's an interesting choice, he's got a lot of links coming down the south side, he's actually going to find these adepts here, the links going to surround, the roaches will help to damage, only gets one kill though, as we'll see the queen's still moving across, actually, sort of, is just going to get very aggressive, wow, okay, well I didn't actually really think it was going to be to this extent, the aggression, but he's going to push all the way across the map, I mean, I saw the queens coming to the center, I thought he maybe just sits in the middle a little bit, waits for his creep to catch up, just tries to catch it, you know, phoenix out of position or so, but I mean, I guess, when you see more links and roaches and ravages morphing in, You've got to expect this sort of attack coming forwards, and it's pretty powerful, right? Because, you know, we only really got a death, so the Queens will target down Phoenix, which are meant to be kind of a major part of the defense. And this is very interesting. Already an overcharge going down. A couple of corrosive bows will come down to try and help clean this out. It's pushing on forwards, sort of. is going to look to see what he can get up to. And we've seen that uh, Pylon getting taken down. Another Pylon is overcharged here. Phoenix will begin to lift some of the Queens, actually. As we see underneath this sort of massive units in the sky it is still the Zerg player who's starting to pull on through. The problem is the Phoenix can lift as much as they like, but if they're not actually killing these queens because of transfusers, then eventually the lifts die off and eventually they're uh, just going to be running out of energy. Another Phoenix going down as well, and Sword of's initial attack here has just done so much. Empowers the Robo, so nothing will come out of those, and I think this is sort of just going to be claiming game number one for himself. As we see these Ravagers, Roaches, Lings and Queens just continue to clean on up. Another Robo facility going to go down. I think this is more or less it. Some more Zergans coming in from the right hand side. They'll clean up a pile on this hat. Nexus will fall. And well, at this point, it's very tough for Maxed to really be able to continue in this game as we're going to be seeing the units continue to move forward. He's going to hit the natural. And sort of is not going to slow down at all here. I love that Chorus of Bow players been behind the Adepts. Force them to back away. But back away into what? They have to kind of pull away down the side of these gateways. And that's never fun as we see. Well, Pylon's going down. More gateways unpowered. A few more Phoenix flying in, trying to help clean out. It's just going to be GG in the end. Max Edge holding on until the very, very end of this. We're still going into this now. And it is New Gettysburg, the second map. And trailing in the series, unfortunately, is going to be our Protoss player who spawns into the bottom left hand side from Invictus Gaming. Our yellow player is going to be Max Ed. Let's see what he changes up, perhaps, maybe. Well, I, I don't know. I mean, he might just change up his build order in general. But at the same time, he might, you know, if he doesn't get attacked and killed early, we might just see him playing the same thing out and obviously might have a different kind of level of success with it. To the bottom right hand side, our Blue Zerg play from Team Revolution. It is sort of. Very aggressive attack, no lair or anything, no Evo Chambers, no upgrades, just Ling Roach, Ravager. Queens come across the map as well, and that's actually, the Queens coming across is actually super important. Something that you might not usually sort of um, recognize because. The Queens against the, especially against Double Stargate, if you don't have the Queens there, then actually what the Phoenix do is they immediately come in, they lift up the first few Ravagers, the Ravagers go down, that actually gets rid of a lot of your pushing power, and then the Phoenix just continue to kind of get rid of a lot of the Roach numbers, and if they have to focus on the Queens instead, well, Queens can transfuse, they can stay alive a long time, it takes a long time for Phoenix to get rid of Queens, which is, um... It's just a little bit weird. And, you know, it's it just kind of takes up so much time on the Phoenix, and Phoenix don't kill Queens super quick. They're actually pretty tanky, you know? You know, Queens don't die like, boom, like power. They're not just, you know, things that go down instantly to the Phoenix. Um, and the Queen, obviously, then the Queens target down the Phoenix as well, so the Phoenix are continually being under attack, the Phoenix numbers are lowering, and it just stops this Protoss player from having the mechanism to slow the amount of Zerg units that are coming onto the map and joining the fight, so... It's, uh... 
pretty sick. We're going to see a hatchery coming down on the natural expansion. So hatchery coming down over here. We're just going to be seeing a, uh, again, a spawning pool just going to be finishing up in a moment or so. We're going to be seeing this uh, hatch gas pool play into the third hatchery then. Very common way to play. Nothing too crazy about that just yet. So setting on up a new Gettysburg. One of the other opportunities that we do have in New Gettysburg, maybe from the Protoss player's point of view, is to play Sky Toss and maybe try to take an early third base over on an island. We saw Mana trying to do this yesterday in WSG against Nurture. He actually went for this sort of uh, Phoenix based opening and he took the third base, but he actually didn't play Sky Toss. He then played a very standard game behind it. And I don't think that's the right decision because once you try and play a standard game behind it, then I think this base becomes very accessible to kill from your opponent. You know, you can get Zerg drops in there. What we actually saw from Nurture was Corruptors caused spraying it down, and they also helped to fight against the Phoenix. But things like Nidus Networks and so on, very difficult to stop. But if you have a Sky Toss army, your opponent's not going to have that Sky Control to really get into location and do anything over here. And anything that does pop out over here is not going to have an easy, you know, you know, even if you do get some attacks over here, then all of a sudden the Sky Toss army shows up, and these units that are here, probably like Roaches and Lings and stuff, they're not going to do too well against this, you know, a Protoss Sky Toss army. So. That's one of those things which we could see here at a max set. It'll be interesting. He is going to go for the Stargate-based opening. It is a more popular opening on this map just to get that Oracle out. It is close by air. And it's one of those things, one of those maps where if you expect it to go longer, getting that kind of map control early and throughout can be very useful. And we're actually going to be seeing the uh, Phoenix just being um, added on in. So Phoenix is actually going to be coming in instead of an Oracle. Similar sort of thing though, can create a lot of map control, can create a presence on the map while harassing throughout the early stages of the game. So Phoenix play to begin with, we'll see how this continues on as time passes by. So I'm going to drop down that Rotor and for now just looks to be a very standard like I'm going to make sure I don't die to anything Rotor. As he moves across the map he'll pop up here and you will see the Phoenix production. Sees the Stargate and also the Phoenix actually in the center there too to confirm what exactly is building. Robo facility coming down, also spotted by Sword of, so he actually gets a very good read on pretty much everything going on of his opponent. So really good stuff so far from Sword of. Great scouting, great information, and that's just going to give him the opportunity now to, you know, at this point sort of knows, or should know, what he needs to do against this. You know, he knows what's up, he knows what's happening. And so he's just going to be, um, continuing to, uh, build on up however he feels, it feels fit to do so. Bayonet's coming down in Evolution Chamber as well. Are we going to see that plus one melee upgrade as sort of going to ask for a pause? Apparently he is uh, also getting quite some lag spikes today. It's been interesting. A lot of the European players obviously have some kind of, not the best latency necessarily to your NA, but they don't necessarily have poor latency to NA, I think. So, a little bit interesting as we're going to be seeing. A thousand ping, so maybe it's just his internet spiking up or so. Anyways, going to be... Uh, Setting up into this, guys. Just waiting to get going once again. So apologies for slight delays. If ready straight away, just have to reset my little bits and pieces. Players are ready, so let's resume. And let's hope that all is good. So welcome back to New Gettysburg between Sort of and Max Set. As we set up into this, a few seconds are going to come down the bottom side of the map. And well, where were we? Um, if we just sort of kind of try and remember. We had, obviously, Max had going into some Phoenix production with that Robo behind it. Sort of had skied pretty well. And he's just going into this plus one melee attack upgrade and the Bane Nest. That's something we theorize might be what's happening here as well. And probably a Rotoron a little bit later on too. Unless he just wants to play Ling Bane here. Spore Crawl's on the way up as he's beginning to prepare to defend against Phoenix. So, beginning to deal with this as Fleet Beacon comes down. Well, there we go. We sort of talked about the potential going into Sky Toss. And that is maybe what we're going to be seeing here. Well, Prism on the way, that's actually to get this probe over to the third base, I suppose, and we're going to be seeing some Sky Toss play. So, off of just a single Stargate is interesting, but can definitely work out, as we'll see this first Queen is going to go down. Unfortunately, sort of is going to lose out on that one, and this Queen here just has to stick next to that Spore Crawl. Just doesn't want to lose too many Queens. Doesn't want to let these uh, Phoenix do too much damage. No, at least not damage that they don't have to really work for in this, so... Can be seen this uh, group of Phoenix from Max Head still just sort of sat down to the south side here. Third Nexus has started up from uh, sort of, uh, from Max Head too. Actually, we're already bringing some probes over here. So here we go. Third Nexus on the way, and there's a second Stargate. So Sky Toss play here in game two of this series. Again, sort of is leading one game to zero. If you just joined us, he uh, won the first game with a very aggressive Roachling Queen attack on Frost. So our first series of the day as well in the SGL. After this, we're going to be having sort of versus Sleep. Then sort of versus Harston. 
And then we'll also have um, Hawson plays sleep, Hawson plays max head, and max head plays sleep to end the day. So that's um, that's our kind of setup for the day. That's what we're going to be doing. That's our kind of uh, way of playing. Yeah, we've seen here the Graviton Catapult is on the way up, so that's going to be launching the Interceptors faster, as we are indeed going to be seeing carriers starting up in production from Aperol's player. Now, look at this already. We see sort of starting up a Spire, and I don't know what he's figured out here so far. I don't know if he's just figured that this is going to be what it is, like Sky Toss, or whether he wants a Mirror Switch. Either way, as long as he just doesn't... I mean, Mirror Switch would be weird, right, against these Phoenix. So it is as though he's preparing against Skytoss, getting his uh, Spire up early. He might be planning to play uh, make Corruptors and then Mirrors to kind of fight against this. Which is still fine, it's just as long as he figures out that it is full on Skytoss in time, then he'll be able to kind of make sure he's set up correctly here. Have you seen this uh, couple of probes jumping on in? And these couple of probes just going to be popping in here and just joining the third base mining committee. Second Stargate, so third Stargate now coming up. Two carriers being built at a time. As these first few Phoenix still just flying around, seeing what's up. Queen going to target them down along with the small crawler. Some damage being taken here, actually losing a fair bit of health on one of those Phoenix. A couple of workers killed off and still looking for some more. There's more Queens coming in. It's actually a very good Queen count added, sort of. So I do feel as though he sort of figured out what's going on in the early stages of this. With uh, plus two melee and a Bane Nest now researching Bane and Speed. That's going to mean he's pretty powerful on the ground here. And he's just also going to have the Queen's fire anti air in. Uh, there's plus one flyer attacks and six Corruptors. So it really does look as though... He believes in this. Whether, again, still he's thinking of me about maybe switching into mutas or not, man, that's something I still can't really tell here, but I guess for now we just sort of have to, to some extent, assume. I don't know, because, it, you know, you look at his scout and he hasn't really seen anything. He saw the Robo, the Stargate. Maybe he just sees the Stargate and the Robo, and that's enough for him to say, well, what do you need a Robo for so soon after the Stargate? You know? So maybe that is just enough information for sort of straight up here. As those few Phoenix are going to be turned away, they're going to pull back towards the center of the map. Free carriers currently building a plus one air weapons coming down too. And a few more corruptors just currently on the way out. Infestation pit also on the way. I mean, going up in towards hive tech for vipers and whatever else can be very, very useful as time goes by. Also the adrenal glands for those circles on the ground, which are probably going to be very useful for run buys throughout here. So I wonder if he actually just adds on a couple of infestors as well. A few fungal growths definitely uh, would not go amiss. The most interesting thing for me though is the fact he doesn't build any Hydralisks at all, so his ground army really just going to be Ling Bane, and then Corrupt is up in the sky with Queens as well, so it's an interesting way to try and fight against this from sort of, it really is. You see these Queens coming in just trying to push those Phoenix away, and they're going to be pushed back here towards the upper right hand corner. And these three Corrupt some sort of, a little bit of a skirmish earlier, but now they're going to come across the map and see what they can trade with. They're going to come in, can they kill the most ship before? Uh, I think it's always a little bit like, well, what are I actually targeting? He's actually going to go after the uh, carriers. You know what? He's just trading with the carriers. Well, this is awkward. It's not every day you just come across the map and suddenly be like, hmm, you know what? I'm going to kill the carriers off. Um, he kills two and the mothership for more than two and mothership, so it's actually not bad of a... I don't think it's that bad of a trade. Maybe a little bit, but if he outmines his opponent, then trading like this is very good for him. Because if he stops his opponent from ever getting up into a really large carrier count, then naturally that's going to be stronger for sort of than it is for his opponent. A few Ling's going to come towards the front and try and attack, but I mean, they're going to be running in towards just a bunch of uh, a bunch of structures here. They're not going to be able to get much done that at all. A few Phoenix still moving around the top side, not finding too much. Queen's still stacking up energy at this point. Haven't really had to transfuse each other for a long time. And these Corruptors still join up together. Now 19 on the map. It was a nice little attack initially, but now there's going to be three carriers out and more. Well, getting close to popping out here. If sort of attacks in like right now, Okay, there's four carries. I don't think, I think at this point he has to kind of back away. I don't think he can keep on fighting. We do see a few Corruptors going to come in and of course spray down this Nexus though before it can really get going. This um, Nexus is taking quite a bit of damage and Pylon's being targeted too. Pylon's obviously one of the main ways to defend this. Um, if you're going to be relying on Corruptors to deal, uh, clean it up, then Corruptors can't fight necessarily against overcharges or cannons. Not without taking a lot of damage in the process. We're going to see a bust through. A little bit of uh, Ling Bane bust, as we're going to see the Mineral Line is going to be under attack in the natural. At the same time, Corruptors come forwards again. Going to once again target down these carriers, and another carrier about to fall, and another one going to be targeted. And actually, just straight up here, he's taking a little bit of damage from these uh, cannons, but as more carriers come in, he's breaking through the Zerglings. He's doing a very good job. Actually, it's the cannons and the uh, and overcharge that's really stopping the Zerglings more than anything else at this point. Carriers in the main base pick off another... Sorry, Corruptors in the main base pick off another carrier. And sort of just sits around here. Interceptors are going and getting taken down. And I mean, when this carrier pops out, there's not going to be too many interceptors on it. 
Is just going to get away though, so it is going to survive, gets off to the left side. More Ling's coming across here too, Queens are slowly pushing across, creep spread in the center. And you have to imagine that it's sort of who really just has complete control of this game right now. Complete control of this game right now. We're going to be seeing a few uh, transfusers coming down, so Prompter's getting healed on out. As they get ready to fight in again, we're going to see a massive Baneling starting to morph in too. Down here on the low ground, underneath these Corruptors. So here we go, Ling being Corruptor Queen. Getting ready to push forwards once more. As we're going to be seeing these oh, extra corruptors coming in, continue to fight. I mean, just continuing to deny the kind of uh, units from getting into that kind of unmasked state. Really powerful. Now we see the Knights Network too, so he's going to get ready to maybe reinforce faster. I mean, I don't know what exactly he decides to do here, but he could reinforce a bit faster. There's so much he could do. Anyways, Bane's going to connect on this pylon and these cannons. They're going to get rid of those, which means that the corruptors continue to do so much. The Ling is streaming in now will not be shut down as easily. And Maxed has to type out GG, sort of takes game number two. 